In this video, we'll look at creating the sheet metal top hat component you see here on the left. Now the profile is this top hat shape here. Now sheet metal parts are a special category of component that consists of uniform thin wall thickness geometry that can be bent and flattened. So all sheet metal parts in SolarWorks can be flattened from their folded 3D state to a flat 2D pattern. The flat pattern created can include bin lines and gives manufacturers all the information they need to cut and bin the part. The flat pattern can be exported as a GXF or a DWG file format by right clicking on it. So we look here at the design intent for the top hat plate that we're going to model. Now if you were to model this part as a sheet metal part, you might be inclined to create this profile here and extrude it. However, this will pose problems if you are trying to capture the design intent here, whereby the three key dimensions here of 100 millimeters to the center, the distance of 50 millimeters here of an overhang here, and the height from the top to the bottom of 75, those three dimensions need to remain the same when we change the thickness of the material or if I change the bin radius. So if you were to go along and extrude this shape here, you would have a problem with these dimensions here. So we have to use a different technique within the sheet metal tools to achieve our design intent. The part is symmetrical about this axis here. So this type of so-called top hat sheet metal profile is often used in fabrication. So the first stage is to create what's called a base flange, which is a special sheet metal feature and is similar to creating a normal extrude feature. To capture our design intent whereby the three dimensions we saw earlier remain the same, we're going to use a special sheet metal tool called the jog tool to add these two bins here. We'll add the holes using simple holes, which again is available in sheet metal and the part is symmetrical about the front plane. So we'll use mirror bodies as you would normally to create the other half. At the end, we will generate a flat pattern drawing of the part. And we'll also show you how to export the part as a DXF or DWG model. So here's the drawing of the folded sheet metal part. So here's another a drawing of the flattened top hat component and it's inserted here rotated on our drawing sheet. So we'll go on and look at this now in SolarWorks. So here in SolarWorks I've already opened a brand new part based on my template and I've already saved it even though it's empty as top hat plate exercise. So the first thing I'm going to do here is change the material to 1060 aluminium alloy and I'm going to start by opening a sketch here on the top plane. And I'll begin by drawing a rectangle and I'll click on the origin and draw the rectangle out here to the right like that. Let's dimension it. It's 100 millimeters from the origin to the back edge there. And it's 400 millimeters long. So here is our rectangle on the top plane. We're going to create this as a sheet metal part. So you should have the sheet metal toolbar here. If you don't see it there, right click on any of the tabs there on your feature manager and select sheet metal here and turn it on. If it's not there, then you can go and customize the command manager. And in that case, if you right click on any of these here and you can go add tab and you'd be able to select your sheet metal tool from here. So if you look here at the sheet metal toolbar, most options are grayed out. All we have are the base flange and a swept flange. This is going to be a base flange here. So let's click on base flange. Now for this exercise, I'm going to use a gauge table and SolarWorks has a number of gauge tables here. And I'm going to pick the sample aluminium table here, metric units. So let's select that. And within this table here, we have various sheet metal parameters that are built in. So in this case, we're going to use a gauge of 20. And a gauge of 20 will give you a thickness of 0.9 of a millimeter. You could override these by clicking on this here, but we're not going to do that here. So I want to extrude up from the top plane so I'm going to reverse the direction and we're going to extrude up. So gauge 20 will give us our thickness of 0.9 millimeter. We can set the bin radius here and we're going to use a bin radius of three millimeters. This is built in here into our gauge table. 
so we have a number of options here so i'm going to pick three millimeters there from the drop down list again you can override these settings but three millimeters is our bin radius so we're going to use the k factor for our bend allowance and the k factor represents the location of the neutral sheet with respect to the overall thickness and it's usually halfway on the thickness of the part you have other options here, such as bend tables, bend allowance, bend deduction, and bend calculation. Today, we're just going to use the K factor. Under auto relief, you have three options, rectangular, tear, and obround. We're going to leave this as rectangular, and the ratio is 0.5 relative to the thickness of the material. We won't have any requirement for auto leaves in this exercise. So let's click OK on that. So here's our base flange. Now you'll notice here that there's two additional features added to our tree. One is the sheet metal feature, and this controls the bin radius and the thickness of the sheet metal part. If I right click on this, I can select edit feature, and this takes you back in where you created your bin table. So the settings in here now of thickness, gauge 20, bin radius, and so on. All these settings will apply to all the features that we create from here on in our sheet metal part. So that's controlled here in one place in the sheet metal feature. And it's the first feature here on your tree appearing before the base flange. The flat pattern is currently grayed out. We'll come back and look at this later on when we have some bins in our model. You'll notice here now on the sheet metal toolbar that most of the options are available to you. So we can create lofted bins. You could convert a solid model into a sheet metal, which is another way of creating sheet metal parts. You can create edge flanges, miter flanges, hems, jog, which we'll look at later on. And this is used to create a bend here in our sheet metal part. So the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to open a sketch on the top surface here of our sheet metal part. And I'm going to sketch a line across there. And this line is going to have a dimension of 50 millimeters in from the outside edge. So this is one of the key dimensions for our design intent. It's 50 millimeters. Another one was the 100 millimeters that we created previously here. And we'll come back to that later. So on our model, we want the distance of 50 millimeters from the bend outside here to the outside of the model here. So let's see how we're going to achieve this. We're going to use the jog tool here. And as the pop-up tells you there, this adds two bins from a sketch line in our sheet metal part. So select jog. The first thing we have to do is select the fixed face. And this is the face which will remain fixed. In this case, it's this face here. Make sure the arrow is pointing upwards. So you can see there, you've got a jog here and we can set our distance. We can extrude up to vertex, up to surface or offset from surface. We'll keep this as a blind extrusion. The distance from top to bottom, and this is another one of our key dimensions, the offset dimension, and this is 75 in our case. Now, this fixed projected length here, if I turn that off, you'll see that you get a folded model there like that. And as I start to reduce this, it has now bent the metal around there using the length here of 50 millimeters. So this is 50 millimeters on this side as well. You've got 50 here and remember the original distance here is 100. So SolarWorks, as you start increasing this, will put in the bins where they need to go. We've got three options here, outside offset, inside offset, and overall dimension. Now our overall dimension in this case, this is the option we need. So overall dimension is 75. Now, if I make the overall dimension there 75, I will only have one bend because we don't have enough material here to create the second bend. So if I turn on fixed projected length, it will keep the original distance of 100 millimeters here. And at the same time, put in our two bends here. Now the bends are at 90 degrees. You have options here if you want to override the custom bend allowance, but we're using the K factor of 0.5, and so we'll leave that as is. Now, the jog position, if I look in here from the right, and maybe just rotate our model just a little bit there, the bend can be on the center line, 
we can have the material inside so it puts all the material to the left in this case of our line we can have material outside which will give us 50 millimeters on this side or you can have bend outside and that will put the bend and the distance here of 50 millimeters in this case the material outside is the correct option here so these two values here the overall dimension for dimension position and this option here material outside that will capture the design intent that you require here so let's click ok on jog if you want to check the distance here you could use the measure tool and measure the distance from that face to this face here and the distance there should be 50 millimeters. So that's just a check there if you want to use that on your model. Now, one of the things that I like to do here in my geometry is show the tangent edges as a phantom line there like that, which will make it easier when you're looking at this autographically. It makes it easier to see the actual edges of the surfaces and the actual tangent edges. So to do that, go into options, display and set the display of your part assembly tangent edge display to phantom if i have them as visible then they all look the same so system options display display your tangent edges there as phantom and click ok now when it comes to creating the holes you have a couple of options one is you could open a sketch here on this face here as normal and let's draw our center line here and draw a circle as you would if you were doing standard extrusion i'll draw a circle here i'll draw another one here let's use the crossing window here let's make these symmetrical So this is 12 millimeters, 50 millimeters, and it's 25 millimeters from this edge here. So those are two circles that we can use to create the holes here. And it's centered about the midpoint of the edge there. When I go to extrude these as a cut, you have this option here, link to thickness when you're working with the sheet metal part. So click link to thickness and click OK. And that will always make sure that the cuts run through the surface there like that. I have two further holes on this face here. But another way to do this is to use the simple hole feature here from the sheet metal toolbar. So let's click this face here. It puts in a hole there on the face. In this case, the hole is 16 millimeters. Link to thickness is already there. So I'm just going to add the hole. It's not in the right position. And then I'm going to go in and edit the sketch that it creates for me there. So this is optional if you want to use this tool. It's just another way to do the same thing. So now, as before, I'm going to put in center line here. Use a crossing window, make those symmetrical, dimension them. Now I'm going to dimension this 32 millimeters from this edge here. Those are now fully defined and exit out of the sketch. So it's a bit like the whole wizard that you've used previously. So that's another way of doing that, but either way will work. So you have a choice of options there. Just use your regular sketch like we did for these two holes here, or use the simple hole for these two holes, which you used here. Let's save our model. To create the other side, I'm going to use mirror body. The other side is identical. So make sure you select the flat face there for the plane. And go to features, mirror, expand out bodies to mirror, go up here to your folder, 
the feature is named here based on the last feature that we created. Cut list here has replaced what would normally be your solid bodies folder. Make sure merge solids is ticked so that you create a single solid. If that's not ticked, you end up with two separate bodies here. You don't want that option. So go back, edit the feature, merge solids. This will fuse the two bodies together about the face there, giving you a single solid body here. Now on the sheet metal toolbar, if you click flatten, the part is now flat. And here's the model in its flattened state. When you click flatten here, it unsuppresses the flat pattern feature here, which is usually the last feature on your sheet metal part. If I untick flatten again, then this flat pattern feature is now suppressed, which means that the model shows here in the folded state. Now this cut list here, creates a cut list you can update automatically. So there's your cut list and you can bring this information into a drawing. Now, if you right click on the model here, you've got an option here to export it to DXF DWG. Select sheet metal in the options here. You can export the bend lines and the geometry and click OK. And you get a preview here of what the flattened model might look like. You can remove entities from this if you want. That's export your model as a DXF or DWG if you need to use those file options for machining your model. I'm going to cancel out of this at this stage here. That was just showing you that that's an option that you can avail of there. So let's check our design intent. Let's measure the distance from the top surface, the bottom surface there. And you can see there that the normal distance is 75. And of course it's 100 millimeters from the center because we mirrored across and it's 50 here, which we've checked already. Now, if you were to go back here, the sheet metal feature, and you were to select a different thickness and a different radius. So if I select gauge 10, which will give me a thickness of three millimeters for the material, and let's change the bin radius to five and click okay. So here now is our sheet metal part. It's three millimeters thick, as you can see there. And the internal bin radius here is five. Let's check our design in 10. So the three key measurements. So one was this distance here. From there to this phase here. And the normal distance there still remains 50. The distance from the top surface to the bottom surface is 75. And if I were to check, I can't check the 100 millimeters here at the moment, but if I were to roll back before the mirror and check those values, the distance here is also 100 millimeters. So those are our three key dimensions, all correct even though we've changed the thickness and we've changed the bin radius. So before I go and create the drawings, I'll change our sheet metal properties back to gauge 20, which will make the thickness 0.9 and I'll change the radius back to three and click OK. So there's your sheet metal part modeled. We'll go on now and look at creating the drawing of this. Thanks for watching.